Welcome back guys. Today is a bit of a big reveal. We finally decided what we're going to use to heat the cabin. Stay tuned. Well, some bad weather's headed in our way and uh, decided uh, to forego a trip to the cabin, getting caught up in freezing rain, and uh, just stay home and uh, take a look at the new delivery. So what you can see behind me here is uh, covered up. It is the final decision we've made in regard to heating the cabin. So as you know from my previous videos, uh, trying to decide between heating with wood or heating with propane. I never realized what, uh, I don't know it's not controversial, but just there's a lot of opinions on what to choose for heating an off-grid cabin. A lot of people, there's a lot of pros and cons for the different uh, options. Certainly our property, we've got a lot of wood uh, to heat with and uh, you know, I'd love to have a wood stove. You know, it's great, they, they smell nice, uh, that crackling fire is very soothing. We've got an endless supply of uh, resources in terms of the wood on the property if managed properly. Um, but the cons that we were thinking of for the wood was certainly um, you know, the labor involved in getting the wood. The biggest thing too was space. As you guys know, I talked about sort of, you know, distance away from combustibles that was required for a lot of the stoves we looked at. And the way we designed the cabin, uh, we originally weren't thinking of, you know, even spending a lot of time there in the winter. So we didn't really budget that space. We looked at a lot of different models. We found one that uh, might work for us. And, uh, but then started thinking, hmm, maybe propane would be the way to go. So we were taking a look at a lot of those different units. As you know, in one of my previous videos, uh, we were pretty set on uh, a really nice little propane heater that kind of looked like a wood stove. The pros for us for uh, heating with propane would be uh, basically that you know, they don't need as much space, you know, with some of those heaters. The offset from combustibles was a lot smaller, so that was attractive. Also that uh, they're very efficient stoves these days, especially these direct uh, vent heaters, um, you know, quite efficient. Um, a lot of them are a lot quieter, so that was uh, a pro. Cons, obviously, for propane heating are cost. Uh, and then, you know, you're looking at having a propane tank installed. So 100 pounders or you know 300 pound tanks, that's something that we have to consider as well and ease of access uh, for the, the propane company coming into the property or would we go off site with the propane uh, tank, you know, disconnect it, drive it to town, fill it up, maybe a couple times a season. So we'll see what we decided. And thank you guys so much for your input on it. I really listened to your comments. So in our minds, you know, we made lists of the pros and cons of the wood heating versus propane heating. Watched a lot of videos on, you know, installations of both. And uh, also to the insurance factor is really important. So our insurance company is going to charge us more per year to have a wood stove than uh, a propane heater. So what did we decide? Well, let's do the big reveal. All right, drum roll. There you have it. It's the 20,000 BTU Martin Direct Vent Heater. So it's a propane heater, and I'm pretty pumped uh, to have this installed at the cabin. Let's unbox it and see what it looks like. Well, there's the front view of the unit. It's a really slick unit. Um, it's about 23 inches tall, 26 inches long, and it's only eight and a quarter inches deep. And it weighs about Nah, just a little bit shy of 50 pounds. So definitely very, um, you know, you can pick it up and move it around, no problem. So this unit only takes propane and uh, it does have a thermostat in it as well, which is really nice. And as you can see up here in the front, this is glass. So you'll see uh, the blue propane flame all throughout here when it's lit. Of course, it's not connected now, but that's really nice. We paid a little bit extra to get uh, the view of the flame. Here you can see it is quite narrow, the eight and a half inches. And here's where you turn the unit on. This is the pilot light and this is, uh, it has an internal thermostat. So basically you can either have it at a lower setting uh, or high setting if you like the cabin a bit warmer. And you can see how narrow the unit is here. You know, this is my hand. So it's not really uh, too wide at all. And here's the back of the unit. It only has to stand three centimeters off the back of the wall. And that's really handy. And here is the vent system there where it takes in the cold air and then sort of vents out uh, the combustion gases there. What also came in the box is the, the vent itself. And so this part right here is gonna go inside the wall and that sticks out to the outside. Just tipping it out of the box there, you can sort of see what it, uh, what it looks like. This is just a little bit of the styrofoam there still stuck on it. 
And here's the vent that will sit directly outside the cabin wall. Also included in the box are the uh, face plates for the indoor and outdoor part uh, of the setup. And all the hardware comes in this little bag. Of course, it comes with the instruction manual and I'll show you in just a minute uh, the uh, installation guide that you stick on the wall before you cut the holes. Uh, but as you can see here, we've got the uh, MDV20 unit. So basically it's maximum input uh, is 20,000 BTU per hour and the minimum is 6,000. So you can dial it back down. That's great. So it can save on using a whole lot of gas. There's some really interesting facts there if you guys understand uh, those numbers better than I do. And just a visual on the installation so you can see what I'm talking about. There is the unit itself and there's the ventilation hole and there's a the little uh, the vent on the outside of the cabin. So that's pretty neat. It looks like the minimum wall thickness for this unit would be uh, 11 and a half centimeters or four and a half inches. And you can also use them in some pretty thick 12 and 5 eighths inch walls or 32 centimeter walls. So it has a lot of flexibility. The plate I was showing you earlier, obviously there's one on the inside and there's one on the outside of the unit. And that's sort of what I was talking about earlier. So really important when installing these units is to take a look at the local code and the um, you know the installation guide here. And as you can see here for Canadian installation, um, the clearance uh, to any window or door is about 12 inches. So we can do that no problem. And a vertical clearance to the soffit I think is about 18 inches uh, to two feet. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. And of course, before we install it, we will definitely look into that. Uh, other things to note here are listed uh, clearance to different corners and stuff like that. And uh, we've got lots of space in the cabin to install this, so I'm not worried at all. We've got a few sites picked out. One possible location could be sort of above the couch area. Uh, you know where we see that bookcase in the cabin. That bookcase can come down, the unit can go there, or possibly on uh, the opposite wall, uh, about 12 inches obviously from that window um, between the kitchen cupboard and the window. So other options exist as well, but those are two sites we're looking at for now. And the other cool thing about this product is it is uh, distributed by a Canadian company, so it's always good to support local. This is uh, the diagram that comes with uh, the heater and basically you tape this to the wall and then you can cut out, um, you know, it, the heater is basically the large square around the big circle or the circle is actually the hole that we're going to have to drill in the cabin wall. And as you can see, it's going to be a pretty big hole and that's, yeah, that's going to be a little nerve wracking because you kind of can't go back once you've drilled a hole through the wall like that. So you want to confirm your location twice and then only cut once or you'll be really sad. So anyway, this is really handy. So you don't have to like worry about, um, you know, transposing something onto the wall. You know, this is just there and then you just saw through it. So I think this is a really slick unit so far. Um, you know, it's very portable. It, it There's not a huge uh, offset to combustibles, which is great. Basically, we just mount it on the wall and it's, I'm not going to be tripping over it like I would with the way we've set up our cabin if we were to put in a wood stove and uh, we can you know scale back the heat it provides a more even clean heat and i've heard that um, this unit is actually fairly quiet i'll be keeping you guys up to date with what i think about this unit as we go along with it so i've heard that this unit installs very quickly some people if they already have the propane setup it's probably a little over two hours from unboxing to getting it uh, set up in the wall and that's people that have already had a hole cut in the wall. So probably take us an afternoon to get installed. I've already have a phone call into the propane company and we'll have to decide what size tank we'd like. I'm thinking, I mean, the most practical will be for us to get uh, a couple of hundred pound tanks. Then you can kind of switch them off uh, and take one into town to fill it up. Uh, we, you know, having the propane accessibility, yes, I know if you're a prepper, this is obviously a concern accessibility and you know, the propane can run out. It's not something that's always available. But, uh, you know, something we've decided to do for now for our reasons. Like I said, my insurance will not be going up uh, with propane heater, whereas it would with wood heating. And will I miss the crackling of the wood stove? Yeah, I probably will. But the compromise here is getting the glass uh, on the front of it so I can see the flames flickering uh, to relax me while I'm at the cabin. So I'll be really looking forward to getting this installed in the next few months. And then it'll be all ready for next fall. Um, you know, it's a little bit late to kind of get things going this season, but uh, we've got lots of time. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for all your input on the previous videos discussing this issue. Thanks again to Monica for uh, pointing me in the direction of this unit. I'm hoping this works out. I think it will. It seems like a good fit for us. All right, guys, weigh in on the propane versus wood heating issue. What are your thoughts? And I uh, look forward to seeing you next week. Have a good week. Take care.